Here we are in PowerPoint, and here's an example of the crossword puzzle that we're going to recreate. We're gonna have a blank puzzle as well as a puzzle with the words there to work as an answer key. I had to suggest grabbing a notebook or paper or pencil to jot down any topic ideas or related words that you have and create your clues so that when you're ready to create your crossword puzzle, it goes a lot faster and smoother. So now that you have your chosen topic, related words, and clues, you can get started with inserting your table. My chosen topic is sums and differences related to addition and subtraction. Of course, my name is Michelle with MathBell, where everything I create is related to elementary math. We're gonna get started by inserting a new blank slide onto your page and then inserting your table. So you're gonna go up to the ribbon, choose insert, click on table, and then insert table. You wanna select the amount of rows and columns that are gonna fit your word that has the most letters. Once you have your table, choose the table design that you want. I usually go with the no style table. I can insert my own colors. And then go ahead and format the table to the size you want. Stretch out the width and the height so that it fits most of your page so you can type in your words. And you can also do this under the layout tab. Next, you're gonna format each of the cells by selecting the inside of the table, going up to the home tab, and choosing the font that you want for the words inside of your table as well as your text size and your text alignment. If you want it to the left or to the right, if you want your letters to be in the middle, top, bottom of each cell. Now that we have our table all set up, we're gonna start by placing in our words, starting with the longest word. And remember, you know how many letters are in each word and where to place your words because you have them written down on paper, just like me, see? Once you have your longest word inserted, build around that word using those letters that's already included, and then you can continue to add on from there. If you don't get it right the first time, it's perfectly fine. Keep working until you figure it out and fit them all into your puzzle. Next, we're gonna get rid of the grid lines and thicken the outlines of each letter. So to get rid of the grid lines in the table, you're gonna select the table, go up to the table design ribbon and choose where it says borders, no border. That gets rid of them. And if you wanna change the color on your table, the color of those lines or the thickness of the lines, now is the time to do that. So once you choose your color and thickness, go back to the table, select your words and then click on all borders under the borders tab. Do that for each of your words until all of your words have a border or outline around them. Next, we're gonna add in the very small details which helps to bring our puzzle all together. We're gonna zoom in closely on the example of the already completed puzzle just to focus in on where those numbers are placed in each cell and how small they are. What we're gonna do is create each text box for a number and strategically place it around our puzzles that we've created in this tutorial. To make those small numbers, you wanna to go to insert new text box, and we're just gonna start with a large text box. Change your font. We're gonna start with one, and we're just going to minimize that text box. Let's zoom in to place the numbers. Once you have the size and font that you want, you can go ahead and duplicate that text box to create all of your numbers. Even though I have 10 words, I'm gonna use one for my across and down as well, so I only need nine numbers. So I'm duplicating each number, each text box here. I'm gonna do seven more. Now you just need to place your numbers with your words in your puzzle.
If you ever have any of your text boxes that don't wanna go right where you want them in the corner, just zoom all the way into those numbers and you can manipulate them a little bit better. Now I'm gonna duplicate this page so that I can create a blank puzzle. Control D or Command D on that slide. So on this bottom puzzle inside of the table, I'm going to select all the cells and press delete. Make sure you do that in the table. If you do it outside of the table and you select everything, it's going to delete everything you have on the page. So make sure you're inside of the table and it will delete just the letters that you've typed into the table. So now with the blank puzzle, we have a puzzle with the answers already there, those words, and a blank puzzle. Our next step is to save them both as an image. Okay, so next we're going to insert some blank pages so we can add in the images of our puzzles that we created and build out an actual page with the clues and a heading on it. Next, insert another blank slide into your page. Then we're gonna go back to insert, choose the picture file tab, and then insert from a file. And you're gonna select the image of the puzzle that you created that already has the words included. We're gonna insert that blank puzzle a little bit later on. So right now we have the puzzle with the words already in it. Now that we have our puzzle as an image, we can move it up and down, manipulate it all around, and create a space to add in our clues. I'm going up to insert another text box and make a text box for my down section and my across section. So now I want to add in my clues for the down section and then duplicate that to make my clues for the across section. So I'm duplicating the text box for down and I'm gonna take off the bold and decrease the font size and add in my clues. I have a one going down, one down, three down, four, five, and seven. So here's where you actually fill in with your clues for your crossword puzzle. And after you fill in what you need for your down section, copy and paste or duplicate that for your across section. And remember, use your notebook where you wrote out all of your notes to help you move quickly through this part. Now let's add in different page features to kind of bring it all together as one page. And remember, you can manipulate the picture of the puzzle to make it larger or smaller based on what you want. Now we're gonna do something that can be a little bit tricky, but I think you can do it to duplicate this page with our blank puzzle. After you duplicate the page, go up to insert and insert a picture from your file and you wanna click on that blank puzzle. And what you're going to do is fit that puzzle over your puzzle with the words. So if you need to zoom in so you can see where everything is, then just cover your filled puzzle with your blank puzzle and shrink it so that it fits. You can use those red grid lines to help you fit it over your puzzle. Once you have that fitted, you're going to right click on that top image and click send to back. You wanna send that blank puzzle to the back of your page. So then on top, now you have the puzzle with words and you're just gonna delete that. And this is on the duplicated page. Now you have that page filled with all of its features with your blank puzzle. Let's finalize it by adding in answer key in a red font. Here are your two puzzles, one with the answers and one without, and here's your last step. 